Hiya pals, Disney devotee here. Welcome back to my channel. The Lion King was the highest grossing movie of 1994. It was a massive success with critics and audiences alike. And it was the number one animated film for nearly 10 years. I was seven years old when the movie came out, not to date myself too much. <laughs> and it was just huge. I mean, I'm so lucky I was a kid during the Disney Renaissance. Wow. <laughs> Three decades later, Disney and fans are celebrating the 30th anniversary of The Lion King. Recently, there was a concert celebrating its anniversary, and it got a lot of people talking. Let's get into it. Disney devotee. As always, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe as it helps my little baby channel out so much and it helps you to not miss one single upload. So, <laughs> on May 25th, there was a concert celebrating The Lion King's 30th anniversary at the Hollywood Bowl. This concert was filmed and it will be dropping on Disney Plus at an unknown date. Even though it's not streaming yet, a lot of people in the audience did record bits and pieces of it and post it on social media, as one does. Massive talents performed in this concert, including Jennifer Hudson, Nathan Lane, and Jeremy Irons. A lot of the original voice cast came back for this concert. But, I don't know about you, if you were on TikTok or Instagram or really any social media app, there was one performer in particular that pretty much everyone was talking about, and that was Northwest. She took the part of a deserving kid. There were probably like hundreds of kids who were more than qualified to take this role, who were lined up for this role, but no, Northwest took that stage because Kim Kardashian and Kanye paid them to put her on that stage. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and say she was utterly terrible because she's 11, but there are 11 year olds that work on this craft and art and audition for this part and didn't get it because she was in the running. I've seen a lot of videos about her performance especially, and I know I'm a little behind in making a video myself, but I wanted to have a little time to kind of put together my thoughts and my feelings about everything. And I want to be clear, Northwest is a kid, so I am not going to bully her, pick on her, nothing like that. We don't do that here, and, uh, well, I mean, I'm not going to bully anyone, but I do have some criticisms. <laughs> and I really want to talk about this whole situation as a former theater kid. I mean, theater was my life. I was in rehearsals, classes, private lessons, performing, rehearsing, all the time. It was my life. I was homeschooled, and so... That allowed me to have a more flexible schedule to do a lot of theater back in the day. I also have a lot of experience teaching and directing children's theater productions, so I feel like my experiences have helped shape my perspective and my opinions. And as always, these are just my opinions being expressed in this video. It's perfectly fine if you have a different opinion. I'm not stating anything here as fact. Obviously, it goes without saying I'm also a Disney fan, and that does color my opinion as well. But in case you have no idea who I'm talking about or what happened, let me break it down for you really quick. Northwest is the 11-year-old daughter of Kim Kardashian and Kanye West. Kim Kardashian is a wealthy influencer who really shot to fame with the reality TV show Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Kanye West is a wealthy, famous rapper. So, North was born into fame, fortune, and privilege. I've seen the term Nepo Baby thrown around a lot, and I'm not really going to dive too much into that, just a little bit, but I do believe nepotism is a thing. I do believe nepotism was part of this. On May 25th at the Hollywood Bowl, Northwest performed the song, I Just Can't Wait to Be King, at the Hollywood Bowl's 30th anniversary concert celebrating the Lion King. And immediately, people started talking about this performance.
Yeah, she absolutely does not belong on that stage. To put it bluntly, she either can't sing to save her life, or the occasions got to her perhaps, or whatever it is, she doesn't belong on that stage. Ashton Kanye West's daughter performed one of her songs, Just Can't Wait To Be King, from the Lion King production and obviously the film, and it wasn't the best. What upsets me about this whole situation is Kim quite literally opened the door for her to be publicly ridiculed in this sense. She quite literally set the stage for people to observe her performance. Needless to say, North's performance wasn't exactly well received, and there was also just kind of a lot of fighting <laughs> on social media, people defending her, saying she's just a kid, you know, it doesn't matter, and other people saying, well, there's all these talented kids, so it kind of does matter. But anyway, most people, myself included, began wondering how she even got this role. And I've heard conflicting stories about this. I think there were, in fact, auditions, but as soon as Northwest showed up, basically the part was hers. Although I've also heard other things where the part was promised to her from the get-go and that producers or the director is friends with Kris Jenner, Kim Kardashian's mom. I don't know, the rumor mill is strong and it's hard to know what's true, what's not true, but there seem to be claims that some kids did in fact audition for the role of Simba. And I have some thoughts. <laughs> but honestly, either way, both scenarios are not great. I mean, think about it. You are a kid who's put in so much work, so much time, so much effort. You go to the audition and you work your heart out to get the part of Simba. And then you see Northwest get the part because she's a name, right? Because her parents are wealthy. You feel like maybe she didn't earn it, whereas you could have done the performance better. That stings. That definitely hurts. And of course, as it goes with theater, you have to accept rejection. You will be rejected like 90% of the time. So in that way, I hope it was a good lesson for them that Hollywood is cruel and it doesn't matter how talented you are, oftentimes the person with the name is going to get the part. It would also be equally painful if you were a child who really wanted to play Simba in this, you wanted to audition, you know, you've been in the industry a while, you've been training, and there weren't auditions, and then you just see Northwest has the part, she was just promised the part, you see her perform it, and you're just kind of like, ugh, arrow to the heart. But again, I want to make clear I don't blame Northwest for any of this. She's a kid. Let's be nice. Let's not pick on kids, okay? <laughs> and like I said, I have theater in my veins. I grew up doing theater. I was in productions, like, from a very early age. You learn from basically the beginning in the children's theater world, both as a performer and a director, that it is the parents that truly, truly run the experience for everyone 99.9% .9 of the time. <laughs> Directors as well can, but most of the time it's, it's other parents. It's a sad truth in life that drama and politics just follow wherever humans go. If there is a gathering of more than two humans, you can just kind of expect that there's going to eventually be some sort of drama, conflict, what have you. <laughs> and I know firsthand how ugly parents can get. It is insane. I know Dance Moms is very heavily scripted, but every time I watch clips from that show, I'm just kind of like, ooh, that's that feels so real to me. It's kind of sad. <laughs> and if I experienced that in a small amateur community theater group, imagine how much worse it is in a professional real life theater setting. There were many times I witnessed as a director, parents absolutely harass me and the creative team because their precious baby didn't get a lead. The self-entitlement and delusion was strong. And inevitably the next show would roll around and wouldn't you know it, that kid gets a lead that they didn't deserve. Meanwhile, I'd see some of my students who worked hard, never complained, never made waves, were immensely talented, 
never get leads because their parents didn't complain. It was so disheartening. If it was a show where I was on the creative team, I would try to fight for those kids to get them parts, and sometimes I would win, but oftentimes I would lose because inevitably politics and parents would push their weight around. It was discouraging, and I quit directing and teaching theater after that. <laughs> Adults really ruined it for me. That's also why I'm not in early childhood education anymore. My tolerance for drama and BS is like, yay big. From the perspective of a former theater kid, I remember how painful it was to see directors play favorites when it came to leads or directors fold to parents who complained because they wanted their kid to get a lead. It makes you feel so helpless, like the odds are just stacked against you. And when you're a kid, you feel helpless anyway, right? You don't have a ton of freedom. You don't feel like you have a lot of control over your life. So it's, it's just a terrible, terrible feeling. You kind of come to realize that no matter how talented you are, no matter how much hard work you put in, the leads are going to be predetermined because they like to pick from this pool of kids and you're just never going to get ahead. But because I was a kid, I turned the blame inward and I blamed myself. I didn't see fully that it was the adult's fault, the, the parents who were pushing to have their kids get leads or the directors who picked favorites. None of those things were my fault. The responsibility lied solely with the adults involved. The people in charge failed me, but I felt like I failed myself. And I want to be clear, not all the parents were like this, not all the directors were like this, but it does happen, and it can happen quite a bit, even in children's community theater world. <laughs> anyway, especially when I saw directors picking favorites, and then I found out this director was going to direct a show that I really wanted to lead in, I my, my perfectionist side just absolutely came out, and I pushed myself. I was obsessed with being as good as I could be. Like I checked out books at the library like, oh, if you want this part, you have to wear, you know, certain clothes that suggest the role and singing lessons, dancing, you know, losing weight. I mean, I was in it to win it. And in some ways it was very good because I did grow quite a bit in my talents. But in other ways, it was bad because I did become so perfectionistic and OCD, like, you know, oh, if I do this, I won't get the role. I have to do this thing so I can get the role. Obsessive thoughts, you know? And I pushed myself sometimes too hard physically and mentally. Actually, there's a scene in Inside Out 2 that I really related to. And if you haven't seen the movie, it's okay. This isn't a spoiler. If you have seen the movie, then you know kind of the weight of this scene. So Riley is at hockey camp, and she really wants to prove herself and make it on the high school hockey team. So she gets up super early in the morning. She basically doesn't sleep, actually. She's exhausted. She is pushing herself hard on the skating rink, trying to make every single goal she can make. If she misses a goal, she makes herself skate a lap around the rink. And it's just done so well. And you can feel how hard she's pushing herself and how frustrated she is and how unseen she feels. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can totally relate to that. That's exactly how I felt. And I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that. You know, for me, I would practice tap dance routines until my feet bled. And then I would still keep going because I was like, I have to be the best. I have to be good. If I struggle, they're never going to cast me in a role, you know? <laughs> like, I was a teenager and this was my whole life. Now, as an adult, I understand that I am not responsible for all the times the directors made me feel small or undeserving or untalented. That's on them. They were the adults. And it's not my fault that kids were given parts they didn't deserve because their parents bullied the directors. And it wasn't those kids' faults either. What I'm trying to say here is it's not Northwest's fault that she was cast as Simba. It's her parents' fault. It's the director's fault. 
all of the adults involved not only let Northwest down, they also let all these other kids down who wanted the role. Honestly, my heart breaks for those kids that wanted to play Simba more than it does for Northwest. She will be fine. North has basically every privilege available to her in the world. Any opportunity she wants can basically be handed to her if she so pleases. Those other kids, whether they actually auditioned or not, are going to carry that sting of rejection with them, possibly for a very long time. I imagine a lot of them are probably like how I was when I was a kid and blame themselves and think they have to push harder, be better, you know, look better, be skinnier, whatever it is. And that really makes me very sad. It is a very tough lesson when you have to learn that not everyone who deserves to have the role will get the role. And you realize that, unfortunately, a lot more goes into casting than just giving people parts who deserve it. Should it be that way? No, but the reality is, it is. And directors typically don't cast people for roles simply based on their merit. Personal biases, friendships, money, bullying parents, you know, board members, a whole lot goes into casting. And sometimes I think directors don't even realize that these thoughts are directing, <laughs> directing how they're casting a show. I don't think directors always go into casting a show with bad intentions. It just sometimes happens that way. And I am just an ooey gooey, sensitive flower child. <laughs> and that is why I had to quit doing theater, quit directing shows, because inevitably during the casting process, I would get emotional and I would cry because I would just feel so deeply about casting one child or another for a part and, you know, go into these battles that I just would never win. <laughs> so as a former theater person, I feel so badly for all those kids who deserved to play Simba. I saw numerous TikToks of kids who sang I Just Can't Wait to Be King and they did a fabulous job. Their acting was great. Their singing was great. They would have been fantastic. And of course, an unfortunate reality, like I was saying, in theater is 99.9% .9 of the time you have to accept rejection because there could be a hundred kids who would make fantastic Simbas, but you can't cast every single one of them as Simba. You can only pick one. And that is so hard. It's so, so hard. Another thing I immediately thought when I watched Northwest's performance was it really felt like she didn't have any rehearsals. Maybe one rehearsal, if I'm being generous. At first, I thought there was no choreography at all, but then I saw a couple more videos, and she does do a little bit of choreography. So I think there probably were maybe one or two rehearsals. It's hard to say. I don't know for sure, but somebody taught her something. <laughs> But the performance was giving, the original Simba was sick, and so Northwest stepped in at the last minute. But we know that that's not what happened in this case. I mean, you can see the dancers literally grabbing Northwest and physically moving her around the stage. Like, there's like one zebra in particular, it seems like, who was assigned to move Northwest around. <laughs> It just feels very disjointed and it feels like the rest of the cast had rehearsals together and Northwest wasn't there. I don't know. It just felt off. It is very possible, as she is a child, that Northwest's nerves just really got to her and she got up on that stage and forgot everything she learned. That does happen. <laughs> So that is also a huge possibility, and my heart goes out to her if that's what happened. But, you know, stage fright's a very real thing, especially for a kid who's never been in any productions before. She's now at the Hollywood Bowl. I mean, thousands of eyes are on her. I could see how that'd be extremely intimidating. In my opinion, and maybe this is a little controversial, I don't know, but I think that Northwest has great energy and great enthusiasm, which is always at least a good starting point. 
When I was directing and teaching theater, one of the first things I would look for was energy and enthusiasm. If you're hitting every note perfectly, but you have no energy or no emotion, I'm going to forget your audition. Good performers understand that singing a song is also telling a story. You need to sell the song. It requires singing and acting. And I'm not saying her acting was good. Those are two different things, but she did have fantastic enthusiasm and energy. And yes, her singing is not strong, but believe me when I say I have heard much, much worse. <laughs> If it were a middle school performance, her singing would be passable. And I mean, she is middle schooler age. But using the fact that she is a child for a poor performance is a bad excuse. There are so many talented, hardworking child performers out there. And I have seen firsthand kids with incredible, incredible talent. I've seen kids work so hard in productions, so there really just is no excuse. So saying someone is a kid, there's just, there's no excuse. It's lazy. Kids can be good. Kids can put in hard work. I once had a music director say to me, you can either have the audience walk away and say, ah, oh, that was a cute kid's show, or you can have the audience walk away and say, wow, that was a great show. My little brain absorbed that. And I realized in that moment, just because I was a kid or a teenager, it didn't mean that I couldn't put on a great show. I've worked with kids for a very long time, and I can tell you with my entire chest that kids are capable of way more than we adults give them credit for. So when I worked as a director or even just in early childhood education, I tried to come from a place of respecting the kids and seeing their talent and really believing in them, pushing them, but not too hard because they are kids, <laughs> but challenging them, I guess is the right word. I was thinking about it too. If I were the director of this concert and I was told Northwest is going to be Simba in this and I had no say in the matter, how would I handle that? What would I do? First, I would tell Northwest to keep that energy and enthusiasm. The absolute worst thing you can do is make a child feel bad by criticizing everything they do, by making them feel like they can't do anything right. Instead, start out by focusing on the positives. Make them know that you see them, that you value them, that they're safe with you. Even if I was working with a kid who got a role that I didn't necessarily felt like fit them, I still wanted them to know that I valued them and I respected them and I wanted them to trust me when it came to working on a role because if you don't have that basis, that foundation of trust with your directors, it's going to be really hard to get a good performance. A child especially is not going to be willing to step out of their comfort zone and try new things if they feel like the director is not on their side. Second, I would get North working with an acting and vocal coach right away. But say they have four weeks until the production, I would have Northwest working with a vocal and acting coach three times a week, one hour each session. And of course, the focus with these coaches would solely be this song because we're in crunch mode and we just want to get a great performance of I Just Can't Wait to Be King. And I would encourage her to get voice and acting lessons after the performance. Performing is just like sports. You have to practice to be good at it. Finally, I would have the choreographer teach Northwest some very basic choreography. And like I said, after I watched more clips, it looks like she was taught basic choreography, so good job. <laughs> Having the dancers have to grab and pull Northwest around on stage just doesn't work for me. It breaks the illusion. But like I said, you know, there's a lot of grace there because I don't know what the whole situation was. She maybe just got up on stage and froze and the dancers were like, uh-oh, we got to jump in and help her, you know? <laughs> but... Say the choreographer taught Northwest these simple dance moves and she's just really struggling to get it. She's kind of just, you know, not confident. I'd be like, okay, we're going to scrap that. I'm going to just have her do some very simple blocking. And if you don't know what blocking is, that is where the actor moves on the stage, you know, stage left, stage right, that kind of thing. 
I would just much rather have my Simba not move around too much than do sloppy, confusing, half-hearted dance moves, you know? Like, maybe just park it and bark it, as they say. <laughs> but I just find it very hard to believe that the director wouldn't have done all of these things with Northwest. And maybe they did. I don't know, but... She just seemed very directionless on stage, pun intended. It could be possible that the director, the choreographer, you know, the creative team working on this show, maybe they don't have a lot of experience working with kids and so they were a little out of their element. That's another possibility. I just, I don't know. But, you know, it... Just from first glance, when I first watched it, I thought, huh, she didn't really have a lot of rehearsals or practice, did she? <laughs> now that Keeping Up with the Kardashians is streaming on Hulu, which is owned by Disney, a lot of people have theorized that Northwest got the part of Simba because it's a relationship with Disney and it's a great way to advertise the show. There's no such thing as bad publicity, right? So I think there's probably maybe some kernel of truth in that. As in this case, whether Northwest's performance was good or bad, it would have had people talking. As a Disney fan, overall, I'm really excited to watch the concert when it drops on Disney+. Plus. Regardless of my feelings about Northwest's performance in this concert, I don't want it to also overshadow all of the incredible talents that worked on this production. feeling truthfully that a lot of people are going to watch it if for nothing else to see Northwest's performance and maybe that's why they cast her but whatever the reason like I said the adults in her life let her down best case scenario she rehearsed she practiced she got on stage and her nerves got the better of her Worst case scenario, nobody cared about Northwest's performance. No one really tried to challenge her. No one really taught her a bunch. They just kind of threw her up on stage for publicity purposes. And that could be very true. I hope it's not, but there's a high probability. Anyway, those are my thoughts and opinions. It was a little scatterbrained, but I hope I made at least a little bit of sense. <laughs> I honestly can't believe The Lion King is 30 years old. I remember sitting in the theater and watching the circle of life on the big screen and just, it took my breath away. It was incredible. And when the song ended, like you could hear a pin drop. The whole audience was just held captive. I also got to see The Lion King on Broadway and wow, top notch. Just amazing. And actually, I got to do a dance workshop with the dance lead from The Lion King, so that was a lot of fun, a really cool experience. At the end of the day, The Lion King is associated with high quality entertainment, so I think that's a huge reason why so many people, like myself, are talking about Northwest's performance. It kind of was unexpected. <laughs> What do you think? Was Northwest miscast? Do you think her nerves just got the better of her? Will you watch this concert when it goes on Disney Plus? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Akuna Matata!